We're joined by an artist who comes all the way from Fayette. From Fayetteville. Fayetteville, but originally from Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, Fayetteville, Georgia is actually outside uh, Atlanta, Georgia. You know, one of the kind of suburbs. Well, you have an unbelievable story, and this is Namdi Okonkwo. Okonkwo, yeah. yeah. Namdi Okonkwo. Remember that name because this is a man who <laughs> uh, has a, a spectacular story to tell. Yeah. But let's start with um, your beginnings. You were born in Nigeria. Uh, yeah, I was born in Nigeria. I I grew up there. I will say, you know, I mean, I I left Nigeria in 1989. That means that I've been here for 20 years, you know. And I left Nigeria to play basketball. You know, I was recruited to by Brigham Young University in uh, in Hawaii to play basketball, and I played there four years, you know. But my love has uh, always been uh, art. I started with painting, then eventually I found my true love in sculpture. Your you true know. love in sculpture, and here's an example, I think, which is so representative of what you do with this great art that uh, God has blessed you to have yeah. this, this, this art. And in your art, there's the, I've read that there's a you know, love for womanhood. Yeah. So could we talk about this piece, which is in bronze, yeah. and it's lifelike? Yeah, this is called resolution. You, you, you said something about my love for womanhood. I actually love people, you know. Uh, womanhood happens to offer me an avenue, you know, to express, you know, the feelings that I have about humanity. You know, the feelings of abundance, the feelings of love, affection, the feelings of peace, humility, serenity, all those good feelings, you know, which seem to erupt from me each time I uh, go to the studio, you know. So I, I don't necessarily think about the fact that I'm going to, you know, make a sculpture that depicts these uh, feelings, but rather they sort of flow out of me as I, as I work. Namdi, your work has such a feeling and love, but there's also a story of sacrifice. I know when you talk of your, your mother's yeah, sacrifice, yeah. I mean, I can hardly get into this area, you know, without shedding tears, you know. It's, first of all, my, my work is about a deep, deep, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a deep, it comes from a deep, deep, you know, well of experience, you know. Having said that, I don't sit down and say, okay, what experience do I have to draw on now? But I feel that as, as I contemplate my work when it is finished, I see that it is something that is, I mean, it's something that is really deep within me that dictates to me what I do, and I can do nothing but sort of obey. See, my mother is from Nigeria visiting. She lives with us. You know, she's older, she's around 75, 76 years old, and she's had a lot of experiences that I wish that I could record, because each time I hear one, you know, it sort of lights a fire of inspiration within me. And she was telling me a story of what happened uh, during the civil war in Nigeria. I was only about three years old. See, Nigeria had a civil war in, I think it was from 1967 to 70, and she, she was a school teacher then, and she was telling me how she would get up in the morning go to the market and buy bulk goods. You know, around five o'clock she will get up, buy bulk, these bulk goods, you know, and go to another m market to resell these bulk goods and have them sold and be back to get ready to go to school by eight o'clock. And these sacrifices were things that she did to see that myself and my two other, and my only brother then, you know, will survive. And as she was telling me these stories, you know, my eyes welled up. And because I was looking at my, I, I, I looked at myself where I am today and realized that if it wasn't for those sacrifices that someone made for me unconditionally, that I will not be where I am today. And you see, these are some of the experiences that that uh, I don't want to say facilitate, facilitate the, that, that inspire me, you know, to do what I do. And I hope that as people look at my work, they will look, they will probe beyond the surface, you know, and ask themselves, you know, how the work makes them feel. So I thought I would call it something more symbolic, friends, and that's what I, I call them. And uh, originally when I was commissioned to do a larger one of it in Manhattan, I thought of, I thought of renaming the, the large one community because I sense that uh, 
you know, since the 9-11 and, you know, some of the things that have been going on, if there is something that we need, it is a sense of community, a sense of friendship.